this recorded and I'll have this sent to you by tomorrow so you can go back and watch it afterwards. Uh, and then obviously if any questions come up uh, in the future, after the session, you can message me anytime and I'll get back to you. Sound good? No worries. All right. So what got you, uh, what got you interested in coaching? Um, yeah, well, I started getting coached last year. Um, I had no job and, um, pretty much just played Overwatch all the time. So mm -hmm. I figured might as well get coached and try to improve. Um, I'll just turn my game sent down. Sure. Um, yeah, so, yeah, thought I might as well, I mean, take it as a hobby and improve at it and, and get coached and, yeah. Sure. That's pretty much it. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. 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 How long have you been playing Overwatch? Um, I've been playing since 2017, I think it was. Yeah. Started on console and moved to PC. Okay. Okay. What made you uh, start that transition? Um, well, I just, cause PC is just more like using a mouse and keyboard. It's more of like an aiming thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whereas console has like aim assist, but also like I really struggle to aim with those analog sticks. So yeah. 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 I yeah. like, yeah. And just like all the pros are on, um, PC. So is this more competitive on PC? So like, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. And okay. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the thing that scares me the most about console, which is actually pathetic, um, is that there's a hard ceiling <laughs> yeah. because you just eventually run to Zimmers. <laughs> um, and you're like, well, I can't compete with this guy on a uh, mouse and keyboard on consoles. So what's the whole point? Right. So that's kind of tragic, but. I'm glad you made that transition. Yeah. So, well, yeah. how has that transition been since then? And when was that again? I, I missed what you said. Yeah. I mean, that was like, that was like 2018 or something. Gotcha. But gotcha. Long I time ago. Play for a long time, and then okay. just picked it back up this year because I had nothing better last year because I had nothing better to do. Okay. Okay. Makes yeah. sense. What, what 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 made you put it down in the first place though? If you don't mind me asking. Um, it would have been so I got to diamond using winston and then the brig came out and the whole game changed and winston wasn't fun to play anymore <clears throat> um yeah so sure and now you're a tracer man yeah. so you just love the abuse <laughs> yeah well <laughs> now it's like um yeah yeah pretty much like i don't I haven't really played I don't, I, the most fun that I have is, has been playing the faster characters, like where you just kind of jump on the enemy and try to kill them. But then now I've, I've now been switching it up because I've realized my aim is kind of terrible. So I want to uh, <coughs> switching up to Ash and mainly Ash, basically. Okay. So we're going to be like Ash Tracer kind of thing and. <clears throat> okay, makes sense, makes sense. And how is that, uh, why Ash in particular? Just an enjoyable character or? Yeah, I just like, she's she's not like Widow where you need, you can only like, I mean, she's only really useful at long range and mm -hmm. Tracer was like a close range. So I thought I'll try to go for like a middle ground and McCree's like pretty awful at the moment. So she was like the next best because it's all it's all like hit scan aiming yeah 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 exactly yeah. Now, now you said that you picked up ash because you wanted to improve your aim you felt like your aim was lacking um yeah okay okay also, so I was getting bored of tracer makes sense makes sense so you just yeah. wanted to expand your 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 hero okay that makes total sense yeah to me. okay um so ash tracer right now you came back to the game sometime this year yeah. you're around gold right now um and you put in all caps too slow <laughs> um all right fair yeah. enough fair enough um so looking at the form here what do you hope to get out of the session i want to learn how to rank up more efficiently 
Um, perfect makes total sense to me. Uh, Tracer, Ash, play around two to three hours of Overwatch per day. Okay, so how was that time spent? I'm just going to pull up your stream so I can see your face. when you. No, my, I'm not currently streaming right now. I'm recording oh, okay, as if okay. I'm streaming. Yeah. No, so oh, I'll have this. I'll have this uploaded up to Spilo too. I record it like as if I'm streaming, but I realized that like doing the recorded sessions like these, it was like you used to be like three hours straight of no talking with chat because I'm focusing on the student, right? And I realized, you know what? Yeah. This is really not great stream content. <laughs> so I record as if I'm streaming, but I'm not actually streaming. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, all right. No worries. No, no sorry. worries. Sorry. What we what were we gonna do? Sorry. Yeah. So I was just asking, basically, like you play around two to three hours per day of Overwatch. So. How is that time spent usually per day? Yeah, I, 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 that was uh, when I sent that message, that would probably be true. Now it's more like maybe an hour a day. Um, Got it. And I don't really, I, I did used to do like a 20 minute Vaxter warm up and deathmatch is a bit of a hard one because in Australia we don't really get enough. Yeah. Like, I have. Uh, but you know, unranked deathmatch. So pretty much queue up for competitive um, and then play a bit of deathmatch in the waiting queue. Yeah, and then course. that's pretty much, yeah, it's pretty much all just comp. Sure, makes total sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I think deathmatch yeah. has kind of died off in, in, in A as well. It's mostly just the EU lobbies really, which is kind of sad, but um, <clears throat> it is what it is. Okay, so... And then uh, you play about, you said, an hour a day, so you get around two to three games? Yeah, at the moment it's been that, but um, I will go up to, like, two hours if I'm feeling good, like, because I've been playing it for such a long time and getting coached and whatnot, I will, I've, like, kind of not been as motivated to play to that extent of, like, two, three hours a day. Yeah. Um, but if I'm on like a win streak, I'll just keep going. Makes sense. Like, Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what normally stops you? Is it just time commitments or you just kind of aren't enjoying the process as much or, or what? Yeah, exactly. Like I was having a lot of fun with it before. Like I don't really do things apart from working. I don't really do them unless I'm having fun. So, uh, like, yeah, I was having fun before and then now, especially with this Morga crap. Um, mm -hmm. and, and myself, I've been deranking a lot. So playing less because I figure <clears throat> if I'm not winning <clears throat> and I'm just losing pretty much and I'm, I know part of it, part of it is because I'm playing a new hero, Ash. Yes. A new hero for me and, and yes. that's all right. So yeah, like it's, it's. Yeah, it's all good, and I'm just basically playing less now, but sure, to go outside more. Sure, so. good. <laughs> well, good for you. That's that's also yeah. obviously a nice development. Um, yeah, I, I would just say for for right now, the, the most important thing, when especially when you're in your position right now, the most important thing I think that you can be doing is just pursue fun. What you yeah. enjoy doing. Do that. If you're like an hour a day is, is pretty good. Sometimes I play a little longer when I'm having fun. That's good. I would encourage you to try to shift um, practice <laughs> shifting your 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 fun and victory from being a one to one ratio or, or comparison. In other words, I have fun when I win. When I'm losing, I'm not having fun. Try to work at that. Yeah. You know, I think that it's obviously impossible to be perfect at that. I mean, everybody yeah. likes winning. We like winning. That's just how it is. It's impossible to change that. But I do think for me, it's less about not enjoying winning. It's more about trying to enjoy losing more. Mm. Still in finding things to practice and thinking about that moment and that VOD when you, or that fight where you popped off or whatever and, and not taking it to heart and not feeling like, oh, I have SR that I'm losing because I'm picking up Ash. So I'm not going to be able to get back again, right? When we all know that that's something that you can absolutely get back, right? So, <coughs> yeah. excuse me. Um, just pursue fun. Pursue fun. You enjoy playing for an yeah. hour a day? You're doing other things? Great. Good for you. Yeah. Well, well this is a thing like, I, I, I know, you know, that I'm supposed to think that way, but uh, it's like, 
it's hard when you're actually in that <clears throat> process of like, yes, especially now it's, I've never been on a, I mean, I have been on a loss streak, but not from plat. So going down from plat to, to, to gold five has been like, I'm not going to say soul crushing, but it's like when I play <laughs> and I log in and I'm trying to like shoot people and then I'm missing, 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 missing. And like, you know, <clears throat> it's, it's like, okay, well this, I mean, that, that's not fun to like try to shoot people and, and just miss all the time. Of course. You know, or, or to like try to like get something done, like have, have some kind of a plan and then just doesn't work. And, my positioning, I just die a lot. It's like, right. it's not fun. And it's like, there's no way that's ever going to be fun for me, which is why I'm kind of like slowing down with the coaching. I'm, I had the subscription. That's why I was, that's why I picked it up because it was so, um, it you get like a, a discount when you go on Metafy. Yeah. I don't know if you yep. know what it is. I'm aware uh, of Metafy, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you get a discount. So if you like subscribe, so I was getting like coaching every month and then, yeah, it's, it, it was good. And I've managed to get from silver to plat, which was, which is great, but that's all I really, my goal was to be like at least average or above average, like, cause I started in bronze five on PC. So mm -hmm. I was like, just to get from bronze five to plat was like <clears throat> enough of an achievement to where I like, now it's like, you're pretty much, you might, this might be the last coaching session I get. Like, sure. Because sure. I'm not considering giving up the game entirely. Like I'll still, you know, <clears throat> pick it up and, 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 and enjoy it and put it down when I'm not having fun. But yeah, like that's pretty much where I'm at with the game at the moment. So Sure, yeah. sure. I mean, it's a big ask, you know, to not only make that transition to kind of come back to the game, um, but then also to to, you know, pivot hero pools because you weren't having as much fun and then going to a hero that's very aim dependent, right? Um, you know, it's, you're going to have to have some sort of, some mental resilience when you do that. I I remember when I um, I was a Zenyatta Winston Reinhardt player before Roll Q in Overwatch 1. <laughs> And I remember I just stopped having fun playing Ryan one day. And I was like, I want to play Ana instead. So I want to play Ana Sin. I dropped yeah. 650 SR um, over the course of the season, you know, and yeah. that hurt. You know, I mean, I was masters and I dropped a plat. Um, shit. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that, that hurt real bad. Um, but I think like you have to, if you're playing because if you're making that sacrifice because it's like in the long term I want to have more fun, I'm gonna enjoy that more, you have to be willing to pay that price. You know? That's exactly that's exactly it. Like and and this happened with Tracer as well. Like I rank I got up to gold with Soldier, then I picked up Tracer and I went down to silver. Yep. But yep. it's like when you get it's like when you get down and you just keep going down, you keep going down. Yeah. <laughs> like suddenly you start like hitting shots and like, um, you know, positioning yourself properly because, you know, your game sense or your aim is above bloody right. silver five or whatever. So you go down and then it's like, okay, now I'm winning and I'm getting a bit more confidence and I'm ranking up now. I'm getting a few win streaks and I'm getting back up to right. where I was. And now and then with a tracer, I went above even what I ever expected. Yeah. To 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 yeah. do so. Yeah. Like I yeah. know that knows how it works, and and I and I know like when when I'm in that like loss phase, like I I just because there's no way to really for me to really come back once I start losing. It's base. It's like I need to have a break. There's no way to like shift my mindset. Like I pretty much have a break, come back to it if I feel like it. If I don't feel like it, I just do something else. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it. As long as you're it's pursuing... Long, go ahead. It's a long-term thing. It's a long game thing for me. Like sure. I'll probably play some kind of competitive game at some point all my life. I, it's just like something that I just enjoy doing. Here, here's what I would structure it around in your brain. Think of it as you are gaining experience at taking your ego and kicking it to the curb because 
you're willing to make the sacrifice to do what's best for you, right? Because ultimately, like having fun is the most important thing. But yeah. having an ego about your rank and feeling good about yourself is part of the contribute contributor to, to to having fun. And so you're like taking that aspect of fun and you're setting it on fire, right? And then putting it inside of a nuclear bomb, right? Um, just so that you can play a character that you enjoy. And to be honest with you, that yeah. takes a lot of maturity. That takes a lot of maturity because yeah. it's really freaking hard to do. So I guess for you, it's like, Really, I mean, not to be not to be stupid here, but really, like you should feel good about that. You yeah. should feel good about that. You should feel good, like wow, you know, I did something that most people don't have the guts to do, right? Because that freaking sucks, right? And I did it, <laughs> and I'm and I'm, I'm enjoying it sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah. Just whenever it feels like you know, I'm not, you know, this is frustrating. I'm in this rank. Just remember, like, and the other thing to remember is that every single time that you do that, you'll 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 bounce back in theory faster. But also, you've, you'll be like, oh yeah, I've done this before. <laughs> I've done this before. Like right now, if I were to like take rank seriously again and to try to rank up in like, I don't know, one trick wrecking ball, I would be terrible, right? I, I don't know what I'm doing with wrecking ball. Like I think Winston's the tank I play more of, right? Um, yeah. But, I, but, but it would be like, every time I would lose a game and drop to lower and lower and lower, I'd be like, yeah, I've done this before. I'll be okay, right? I'm definitely going to have some existential crisis <laughs> at some point in time. Um, but... Definitely a lot less the first time through. And honestly, I feel like that'll probably carry over to other games and other experiences in life where you're like, you compromise, like looking and feeling good, willing to put yourself kind of out there, expose yourself, make yourself vulnerable because it's the right thing to do. You're like, yeah, I've done this before. It's okay. I don't mind my ego gets kicked a little bit. In the long term, it's going to work out. Kind of like you're developing, you might not even realize it. I feel like you're developing a little bit of a life skill, you know, which is kind of cool. Maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic with it, but you know, I don't know. I think it's cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it's like, I mean, it, it definitely makes sense because no skill that I've done so far, I've actually gotten worse at. Like, right. Overwatch is the only thing that gives me a negative feedback. Actually, it's not the only thing, like, because I also play the drums. Mm-hmm. And that's been a journey. Freaking love that instrument so Overwatch. much. I've been like, yeah, I've been like ranking up in drumming. <laughs> um, and the negative feedback from drumming is when you like record yourself and you realize that you didn't sound anywhere near as good. <laughs> yep, yeah, I know how that goes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that goes. That's the negative feedback there. And it's like learning. I've been learning with that and with the drumming. And with Overwatch and everything, like to, because at the end of the day, it's a fun hobby. Yes, like, it's not a job. It's not for my livelihood. It's just fun. So learning to have fun when you're like, when you perceive yourself as being bad at it, to still have fun and and like push yourself and do the hard things, like play Tracer, play Ashwell, right. like that. And like right. the drumming, it's like playing uh, difficult songs and sucking at it, but you just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Cause it's a lifelong commitment. So yeah. Right. You know, you know what it is? You know what it is? Here's what it is. Um, there's like a certain subset of people. I think I fall into this category. Maybe you fall into it too. We're like, we have to be good at everything that we do. It feels like this drive where it's like, I have to be like good at everything I do. And that yeah. can be such a blessing, but man, it sucks sometimes. It's actually so stupid sometimes where it's like you like steal the joy out of a casual hobby because you can't do anything halfway. And I actually think that's a, that's a, real, that's a real bad thing sometimes. Yeah. Um, and it feels like sometimes, for example, like with Overwatch for you, it, it's fine to be gold at Overwatch or plat. And that's just, that's your goal. It's just to be plat, you know? Yeah. Like, like let's say we even got to like diamond. Diamond is like, technically good at the game like you're definitely a big step above average but you're not great and so are you okay with that yeah. will you still have fun playing the game you know because you can't yeah. the, the, the problem is, is you can't be great at everything that you do you can't yeah. you can have the right mindset that in general like gets you like i i think that like i general most things that i i do i'm pretty good at because I, I have a better mindset of learning than the average person but but mm-hmm. and, and that's a little bit of an ego moment for me but even then it's like i'm still not the best at like 99 percent of the things that i do so what am I going to do? I'm going to sit home and cry about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, yeah. 
you just have to like have that level of maturity, I think, toward like you it's not just maturity, so you don't come across like a douchebag and try harding everything that you do. But I also think that it's like it, it actually robs joy out of doing something if you only enjoy doing it when you're doing it well. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. And that's hard to do sometimes. So I think yeah. that like in a way you're kind of like this might be like like you're saying with the drums, it's like it's also it, it might be kind of like a, a good journey for you to kind of like develop that maturity and like be able to just enjoy things even if you aren't that good. You know, I think like yeah. it's good to be good at some things, but not being good at everything, you know, and just enjoying because it it's just fun and that's all there is to it. Yeah. And then like having it as like another just another activity and not like the only thing that I do works really well. So like even the drumming, I'm taking a break right now and going to go outside, go for more hikes and just mix it up a bit just because it gets starts to get stale when you do the same yes, thing. Yes, yes, yes. When I, when I jump back on and, and go like whether it's Overwatch or drumming, like when I go on a win streak, like I like with the drumming, like sometimes I feel like, oh, my God, I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much. I'm like, and then I keep doing it. And that's same with Overwatch. I'm learning a lot, so I keep doing it. But then when I feel like nothing's going in, it's not working, then I go, okay, it's time to like break it up and, and yeah, do something else. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, the, 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 exactly. 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 Because because it's it's a uh, you hit your head the same problem the same way. Sometimes you need to approach it from a different perspective that in the moment you'll never figure out. You have to take yourself away from it, like divorce yourself from the situation to attack it from a different angle. You know, sometimes, and also sometimes you're just not in the right headspace to solve the issue. Um, mm. I think like, kind of like, I mean, I mean, how, think about it this way. Like how many times have you hit a wall with drums or with Overwatch that eventually you figured it out like two seconds later or not or two days later or two weeks later, right? Like how many times yeah. has that happened? You know? Heaps, yeah. Heaps. Like I always, always. I, I had this, okay, this is the cringiest story I think I've ever shared in a coaching session. Um, I used to play, you ever heard of Lord of the Rings Online, the MMO? Yeah. Crappy, old crappy MMO, right? Um, I used to be super like into the PvP like almost 10 years ago, right? And I was really freaking good at it. And I was really, really good at this one class. And there were times when I would, the class was generally not very strong a lot of the time uh, in 1v1s. And there were times where I, I feel like it hit a brick wall. It's like, I cannot figure this out. I cannot figure this out. And that happened to me so many times playing that game that I actually, I started to, when those days happened, I actually got a little bit excited because I always knew that I was about to break through with something. Like I was about to develop a new strategy yeah, or come right. up with something. Because it had happened so many times that even, even stupid me realized that eventually I will figure this out, you know? Yeah. And I, I, it stopped yeah. getting me, I, I stopped getting super like frustrated and emotional with it when, when I, things would go really poorly because I was like, oh yeah, new development's about to happen. You know, I just need to take, like you said, take time, step away from it, think about it, go back in and something's going to snap, right? doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes you really do hit a brick wall, but most of the time it does. Most of the time it does. Yeah. Well, and, and when I hit the brick wall is usually when I go to a coach. Like if I care enough sure. to break through and I haven't been able to by myself, it's usually when I go to, to someone who knows more than me. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. right. Well, I mean, that, 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 that's, that's, that's smart in a way. Um, yeah. One thing I will say is that there is a... There's something to be said for ideas that you develop on your own. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, I, I think having an external breakthrough is really important. But at the same time, like the most powerful skill that you could possibly develop is being self-sufficient, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it sticks, well, yeah. you know? It sticks when, you, when you're the guy that comes up with it. And not only that, but if you're somebody that keeps running into brick walls... If you got to scream and cry for a bricklayer to come knock it down for you, why don't you just bring a pickaxe? That saves a lot of time and a lot of, you know, yeah. and a lot of money as well, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's it. Yeah. That's so why, I know that I know that why, I'm the guy. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, that that's why I'm like with the drums as well. Like we gotten up to like learning how to shuffle and funk and right. It's like that. That's kind of like the last real like stage before you, most people would kind of just go off and do their own things but if it's a hobby you know not a, not right. a drum major like i'm um, that's i'm considering stopping the coaching with that as well as right. this kind of 
just take a break with the coaching for everything and uh, for all the hobbies and, and just like, tr you know, go for it myself, get, get some sure. books. Like, yeah, exactly. Go through exactly. the books actually like, cause yeah. I actually like coach, coach is just going to give you stuff from the book at the end of the day. Sure. From the <laughs> right. So, yeah. For, for me, it's not that coaching is useless. Coaching is extremely important. But yeah. I think the best coaching is kind of like giving you details and, and things to work on here and there. But kind of you're the one that kind of like takes processes that information and it develops like your own philosophy or your own way of thinking about it or like your own subset, right? Um, yeah. You know, like there's, there's some people that I used to, I used to coach a couple people almost every week, right? And it, it was a grind, because it was really just like, okay, this is what we worked on last week. This is what you work on this week. Um, ironically, the best players that I coached in Overwatch League were the ones that I generally coached one-on-one -on -one the least because we'd have this big in-depth discussion. And it was almost like, go forth and figure it out. Spend like two weeks on it, three weeks on it. And then we would have yeah. constant conversations, like constant, like, like almost every day. But I wouldn't actually sit down and give them new information because they were already coming up with new information themselves, you know? So like if we go into this review here and we talk about like Tracer and Nash things, depending on how serious you are about Overwatch, you know, I want these, these ideas that we talk to and these goals that you're going to be working on to not just be things that you like memorize and practice, but to be like, to inspire you, like figure out new things for you to kind of like coach yourself. And cause you're <laughs> at some point, if we give you like take angles to Tracer, timing of Tracer, whatever, at some point in the next week or two weeks of playing Tracer, you're going to practice something like this and it's not going to work. And you're going to go, why is it not working? And your first instinct is going to be to message me. Right? And yeah. I don't mind that. But it's not the most effective way to figure out the problem. The most effective yeah. way to figure out the problem is for you to sit there and think about it. And to pull up the replay code. And not for an hour, but for five, ten minutes and figure it out. Right? And think about, you know, I don't know if that's actually good. Let me go try that next game. See if it, you know, right? Um, and a lot of trial and error. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, maybe, maybe this is actually the way it's done, right? And it's actually, it's actually the most efficient way. It's because you think about it, it's like the most efficient way would be just to get the answer for me right now. But you know, you and I both know that another question is going to come up and another question is going to come up and another question is going to come up and another question is going to come up. So it's more efficient in the long run for you to actually be the guy that's able to figure out these problems on your own. Because especially in Overwatch, it's like you have to be like, even, <laughs> even I've done live coaching before and most of the quality of the live coaching or the value of the live coaching is me sitting in the background, essentially snapping my fingers. Think, think, focus, think. Because I've done live coaching sessions before where the player wants me to like tell them what to do and it's a disaster. It's two minutes of information, right? A lot of live coaching is just like a kick in the pants, right? And so it's like for you, again, you being the smart guy in this conversation is so much more valuable than me being the smart guy. Yeah, true, hey. So it's like, Teach you know, go ahead. Sorry. Teach a man to fish. Yeah. I mean, that's it. That's it. Exactly. Right. Like you do have to teach a man how to fish. Right. But ultimately you yeah. can't sit over and fish for him afterwards at some point. Okay. Um, and I think that like, ultimately like you being like all the hobbies that I've gotten really good at have been with like some level of coaching to like get me into the hobby and to answer some questions. Yeah. But ultimately like I've kind of figured out my own way. Right. I kind of taught myself. I got, Two coaching sessions when I ranked up the Grandmaster. One was very useful because it really impressed on me the importance of cover. And then the second one was almost useless. From the same coach, great coach, uh, just wasn't all that useful. The rest of it was self, self, all self coaching. Um, and I, I was terrible at it too. Like I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know the game at all, but I figured it out, you know? So um, I figured out what worked better for me. But anyway, I know we've kind of been blabbering on about that, but. I feel like Overwatch yeah, is almost like an analogy for the rest of your life, you know, in so many ways. Like, Yeah, definitely. Your sleep looks good. <laughs> your yeah. sleep looks good. Is that consistently eight? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much. I mean, good on you. I have some health health issues at the moment yeah. that's been getting, waking me up early, but... That sucks. Yeah. That's well, well good. Do? Well, good. At least it could be worse. Like, that's that's not bad. I go to bed earlier. I go good to bed for earlier, you. so, yeah. Yeah, good on you. Good on you. Good on you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I really don't have any other questions. If you want to look at gameplay, we can. If you have any other questions or anything else you want to go over, just let me know. Mm, no, I mean, I think just to sum up my thoughts on the game at the moment, it's 
and I guess gaming in general, it's uh, because I don't really care about Overwatch per se. Like I, it just this the idea of getting good at games. Yes, you know, like Tyler yeah. Tyler One, I think it was. Well, I don't know his name, but his big beef, beefy like streamer. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the, the League of Legends guy. He's like, you know, he's he's somehow shorter than me, guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know yeah, who he is. So, so he like just quit League and just and he quit streaming for a bit and then just focused on playing chess apparently, and got up to like essentially what would be I don't know how the ranking system works, but he got up really to really good like SR in chess. Right. So he, he must maybe he applied all the things that he learned about games in general. Sure. And just was like, oh, I want to be good at chess. And then he just like grinded at chess and just got better at that. So sure. It, it's like, to me, it feels like it's a, it's a mindset. It is. Game sense, aim. I mean, it's all these variables are combined at the end of the day to put you in in your rank can i be honest but it's like i feel like it's not that it's 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 simple but it's complicated so, yes yeah yes I, I i see is whenever we talk about developing the skills like moving from skill to skill and learning new things quickly it's less to do about what skill carries over and more to do how you got good at that skill in the first place so we talk about tyler one yeah. right how did he get good at League of Legends? Like time, application, review, grinding, right? Um, I don't know anything yeah. about his personality. I don't know. But certainly time and grinding, right? Guess what? Yeah. That is also applicable to chess. The positioning and game sense, maybe there's some extrapolation that you could make out there that like controlling the board, controlling the map with League of Legends and chess, right? Um, yeah pattern recognition, whatever, right? But really, that's not even the most important thing. The most important thing is like your ability to apply yourself to something and get good at it. You've learned how to learn. That's what you're pursuing. Yeah. That's what you're pursuing. Yeah, and no, unfortunately, yeah. a lot of that is kind of dealing with what you're dealing with right now, which is like the, the, the setbacks, the frustrations, the putting the fun over the process or, or over the rank and, and like, but you know what? That, that's, yeah. a, that's, that's very useful. You know, that's very, very useful. Yeah, I don't have to be the best. To be honest, like, right, and it's never, it's not going to happen, most likely. So, right, might as well just try to be somewhat decent at a few things. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And just enjoy, like, just enjoy the process of learning new things as well. Like having that beginner's exactly. mindset with everything that you do, because like the, the way of looking at it is, it's like, you've heard the term Renaissance man. Yeah. You know, like know, somebody really. kind of a jack of all trades is what it is. It's like back in the Renaissance, there's like this explosion of learning, right? People that were like getting into science and mathematics and philosophy and poetry and writing and religion and so many different things, right? So it was just a love of learning, really. And a lot of uh, started a lot in the Middle East. Um, and, you know, with, and, and I think like in general, it was just people enjoyed learning about a lot of new things. And, and, and a lot of times people were not experts at those things they were just casual enjoyers amateurs really but they were educated men and women and i think that that's kind of like what you're looking for right now it's like it, there's nothing wrong with not being an expert at anything because you might have an extremely broad skill set right um and that is in of itself very admirable in fact in many ways more admirable and probably more healthy than being obsessed you know <laughs> It really is. I mean, I, I've met, I know obsessed people and I've, I've been obsessed myself about times, you know, like where, where something was basically everything that I did and, you know, they're not very interesting people <laughs> and they're not very happy people either. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. What's, uh, is this Ash? Yeah. This, yeah, this is start, it's uh, Ash for the first round, I think. And then maybe it's with Tracer, but, sure. um, it's uh oh you said too slow that's your in-game name <laughs> your form said gold one too slow and i was like oh you want to rank up faster no nope. yeah, well when too i'm slow. winning it means that the enemy is too slow and then when i'm losing it means i'm too slow that that makes total sense yeah i see the logic yeah. there okay okay <laughs> um all right making sure things right on my end um okay we're, we're, we're. okay so ash 
Sniper hero. You got to create your distance. Nine times out of 10, you're creating distance. Um, I mean, may, basically 97% of the cast, 96% of the cast you want to create distance on, um, you know, besides like Hanzo window. So it's like you, you, you need to create distance. So this here, like the alarms need to be going off in your brain, right? Um, I mean, you look at their composition, right? Moira, Winston, Genji, Life Weaver. Hanzo is a little tricky for sure. Hanzo, I think, is a pretty good Ash counter. Um, but for crying out loud, yeah. the vast majority of the enemy team, this is too freaking close, especially considering you just used your coach gun. So just yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah. Good dynamite. That's beautiful dynamite. Unfortunate. That's just clonking into the wall. That that will happen. Yeah. All right, we get rezzed. Good dynamite. Nice shot. Maybe you die again, but maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. Surely, surely. Oh, we're good. The dynamites have been fat. I really like your target priority. Going for the squishies like every single time and hitting even even one man dynamites. Just huge, right? Righty here. Get him, get him, get him. One little detail here. Which we'll talk about. He's not looking at you. All right. This is yeah. something we talk about a lot of the time with hit scan players. I want you to watch your movement here. Yeah. See this? Why am I strafing? <laughs> Why are you strafing? Right. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I always talk about, we always talk about is like make it easy for you to aim when you can. That's what makes great yeah, players yeah. great, is their aim is great, their movement's great, and sometimes they just stand still. <laughs> And yeah. you should have stood still. <coughs> yeah, I gotta like, yeah, just keep repeating that to myself. Sure, find moments well, when you're strafing, <laughs> when you need to move, right? And find moments when you yeah. don't need to move, right? Okay. Yeah. And then in terms of positioning here, what do you think? Um... Give you a third person just to cheat, you know? Yeah, I mean, I probably could have coached gun up to high ground. Sure. Why? Like, Why is this useful? Really vulnerable on this low ground. Why? Why are you vulnerable? Um, just in general, you're more vulnerable on low ground. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, because they can just dive you. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you have no cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Generally, I mean, I mean. The cover is the cover is less effective, I guess. Not that yeah, there's no cover. I, I'd agree less with that. And more difficult to to use the cover. Exactly. Um, exactly. And it was the first thing we talked about, right? We were too yeah. close. Guess what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Same kind of a thing, I right? An, yeah, I have an LOS on the healer as well from this angle from the. High yeah, yeah, from the well. high ground, right, 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 right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You've created a little bit of a distance. I mean, Pythagorean theorem, right? You're also like slightly further away when you're above them. So, um, I mean, this is better, right? But it was just a little late. Good. <clears throat> Close. I mean, he had the right idea with the dynamite. Just missed it. Positioning, right? I know why you're here. Like, you're trying to push up a little bit, but this fight's lost, right? So, you're too close, mm. right? You're too close. I mean, when a win, let's put it this way. If a Winston can jump on top of you, most of the time, you're too close, right? I understand that, like, the, the jump yeah. distance is pretty far, and he might catch you by surprise. Sometimes that's okay. But you should try to avoid being within Genji Dash distance, Winston Leap, Diva Boosters, one Tracer Blink, Right? That's kind of a Moira fade. Those are the kind of things that you want to create distance from. doesn't mean that you're always a million miles away. Sometimes you might get close to go for a bob. Sometimes you might get close for a dynamite. But you have to understand that there is a, there's an inherent risk there. Now, what do you think about this bob? Um, well, I mean, the monkey was in, and then, like, he kind of jumped out as I was, like... They do tend to do that. <laughs> yeah, so I thought I'll try to split him off, but... I try to split him off from the team. The team is already kind of moving past the choke. Um, but, I mean, they weren't really through the choke. Like, the power right. is not right. really doing, any, doing right. anything. They what do you want with Bob? Yeah. What do you want with Bob? What does it do? What's the optimal Bob? 
in terms of like you describe it. You're coaching a bronze silver player. Yeah. What does a Bob do? Maybe the silver is a little too close. Hits a little too close to home, but <laughs> um, you know, what do you do with Bob? Yeah, well, uh, they usually like I get most um, effect from the Bob when the enemies are in the middle of a fight and they are low on cooldowns and on on resources, I guess, health, whatever. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. How do you want to position Bob? Optimally. Usually, I mean. I mean, probably not behind cover sure. um, and probably where he can shoot at the healers. Sure, exactly. Let's put it this shooters. way. I don't want yeah. Bob to be shooting the same angle that you're shooting on because it's redundant. Yeah, off angle me. Yeah. Right, off angle of you because they're already kind of avoiding your sight lines. So what, too much of a good thing means that there's not enough of a good thing elsewhere. Like right now, if you had the optimal Bob placement, where would you put it? If you could place it anywhere that you want, which oftentimes you can, where would you place it? Mm. Yeah, true. Hey, like uh, probably. I mean, I haven't, I haven't ended up on on the high ground, but maybe sure. like nope. as they're pushing through the choke, like I mean, I mean, if it off angle to me, if I'm on main, like just anywhere other than where I'm going. Sure. So give me a specific spot. You got circles to kind of place it around, right? There's Hanzo, yeah. there's Lifer, there's Moyer, there's Genji. Where would you place it around those characters? Well, it would be like where the Life Weaver is. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. If you could get up here and throw it to the side of the payload and smack the Hanzo, you know, and like it'll yeah. stop right about here. I mean, this is talk about kicking the ant pile, right? Like this is disaster. Like there, there is, there, there's no cover anywhere for them, right? Um, and you know what that means. It's going to mean tree. It's going to mean coal. It's going to mean lunge. It's going to mean panic. And maybe still, somebody still dies. Yeah. And the best part about it is because you've kicked the ant pile with your bob, you might yeah. just sit here and play Kovacs for free. Because yeah. nobody's thinking about you anymore. Hmm. Does that make well, sense? That, would be, that position would basically be like, if I was Tracer, I would be wanting to, I've, I've hidden and then when the fight starts i'm on that high ground right that's where here I'd be as or tracer. here yeah 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 like just with it with basically i, I would want to have a a line into their squishies mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so i think well where would i where would that be and chuck my bob there yeah that's that's something. a really smart way of looking at it. do you see what i'm talking about when it comes to coaching yourself here I give you a little bit of an information. I make you chew on it. You come up with a really cool way of thinking about it that ties directly into your hero pool, and it's a great answer. Mm. Got it? It's good? Yeah. Now, I'm also going to point out as well, you're a little close. Yeah. Right? That's another consistent theme here. Now, this is better. You mess up your coach gun, but you know what? I, I don't even mind. You had the right idea with your positioning. You just mess up your coach gun. If you make a mechanical mistake, it's okay. It's when you make a bad decision, that's not okay. Yeah. Like if you, you had a good angle, but you messed up your coach gun, that's okay. Practice will practice makes perfect, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Any questions so far? Um, yeah, really, that's my biggest, one of my biggest struggles is positioning sure. so that I don't die. Like, I mean, I. Sure. No, I'm supposed to take high ground. I guess there, I'm not sure if I was even aiming at the high ground. I was just aiming to like get just away create from distance. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I smart. Was create distance, like, and and I struggled to like balance creating distance and <laughs> taking high ground and actually having an LOS onto their squishies and being an LOS of my healers and yeah, yeah. There's uh, a lot to juggle, right? Being able so, to do something without dying is my biggest struggle. Right, right. So, so let, let let's prioritize a few things, right? I think. You know, some sort of distance is probably super important, right? Um, some yeah. sort of cover, also super important. Let's start with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's focus on the big, big stuff, you know, and then, you know, making sure that you're playing around where your team is. You know, where's my team? Okay, we're here. Okay, is this angle distance? Kind of, sort of. Is this angle of cover? Kind of, sort of. Okay, it's good enough. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Is it the optimal angle? I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I think probably a little bit risky, you know, but you know what? It's good enough. It's better than 
this. This is too close. It's better than this. This is too close. It's better than, uh, you know, standing in the open here, not enough cover, right? <coughs> um, so give it a shot. And it's actually funny because that looks like where you, that's where you're going to go. And turns out, look at your Genji. Genji Zen, you take an angle, people are going to die. Beautiful. Nice job. You know, it's not an accident when you do right things. 65% of the time, good things happen. <laughs> sometimes you miss the shot. Sometimes your teammates screw up. Sometimes the enemy team does something crazy. But more often than not, you'll be rewarded. This is scary. <laughs> Indus gracious. Okay. I mean, you just got a headshot. That's all. Anzo is spooky. Yeah, four. Yeah, that, 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 that'll do it, right? I don't think you're particularly close. Uh, you just got a headshot. That's all. Yeah. Now, should you peek a Hanzo there when he's already spamming? Probably not. Probably not. But, but, you know, whatever. We move on. It's we have like another if fight. You never take a, if you never take a risk, you'll never get anything done. So. Right, right. So it's okay. So, so you need to look at that and be like, okay, what did I learn from that? You know, like what? Well, I learned that I need to be careful about double peeking the Hanzo, right? Not that the angle was bad. Um, did you want to look, coincidentally, at the Hanzo? Sure. All right. It's up to you. Your, your, uh, your review here. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's keep going here. Because, I mean, it, same things apply to everyone. Sure. Sure. In a way. Yeah, I'd agree with that. A little bit of range, right? A little bit of cover. Same kind of things. Yeah, I don't think I hit a single shot here, but it's... it's yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's one of the Hanzo things, right? It's like, because he's not hit scan, because you don't have a dynamite. Um, I mean, you do have Storm Arrow, which is, I guess, the equivalent of dynamite in terms of easy pressure, but I mean, that's all right. Now, I have a bit of an issue with the positioning here. Okay, thank you. I was going to say, just because your team is in spawn, right? You see this? It's just not smart to be where you are right now, but you did disengage. You did force a jump and disengage it, so that's okay. Yeah. What's the problem? Genji's right there. And, well, um, yeah, there's, there's another big fellow there, too, and, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. Now, you have your Storm Arrow, so it's like you're, you're actually fairly lethal here. Um, but it's just it's just unreasonably close, right? It's just unreasonably close for the character that you're playing. So it's like, even though I like the cover, I like the angle, like you're like yeah. freaking out and running and you should be, right? So instead of you being, you know, here and just chilling, right? And going for shots and going for shots, you're actually running and wasting your storm arrow. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah. Distance management yeah, while still contributing, right? Not being totally passive, take an angle, find cover, you know, put out pressure, but you finding that balance between doing nothing and being way too close seems to be, a, it's a major issue, I think, with you. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we never really got a chance to recover, really. Um, I think that's probably going to be it here. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, these, these, are, these are all tough shots, you know, like, it's like, oh, I didn't hit a single shot, but <clears throat> you really only had one fight. And you blew it. Yeah. <laughs> and you blew it. You I know, you didn't even have a chance to chill or relax or do anything. I'm not watching your Reaper. <laughs> I want to see your tracer. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any questions so far? Um, yeah, I mean, with the long, medium range mm -hmm. heroes, it's like, I mean, I main, do mainly focus on Ash. So um, it's my positioning where I can do something but not die. I guess. I'm um, in that round was a good example. I was always pretty much too close in my head. I'm thinking, well, they're in front of me. I'm not hitting them in the head. I'm bad. I just need to get better. Right. But high level thinking is, you know, I didn't take high ground. I was on main. I was too close to them. My team yes. wasn't in. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Those were all the times when I died. And then if I, care enough to look like go back and look at the vod i'd probably be going why are you on main why are you on main right like, why right main? the reason why that's such an issue is because you put so much pressure on yourself to hit the one shot otherwise you die or you have to run yeah. and when you're running you're not shooting especially with a character like ash yeah. so it's like you know if i was good enough yeah. i could hit the shot but you're also not giving yourself a chance to like actually set your feet and shoot and i was actually it's funny i was coaching a silver ash uh 
earlier this week. Yeah. And we had the same conversation where it's like, you know, when you, Ash is one of the most lethal DPS characters in the game when you just let her sit and shoot. The problem is, is that she's a little bit fragile. So you will have to run around and change your angle and find cover a lot. But when you do, when you do find those positions, when you do time things well, you're unbelievably scary. Like there is not, there may not be a more scary DPS in the game. So yeah. positioning is very important. And, and all the things about positioning that you talked about, right? Getting too close, just getting off of main, checking your team, finding cover. You know exactly what to look for. So go practice those things. And not just practice all of those things. I might practice one of those things or two of those things. Like we said, the, the, the range and the cover maybe are the two most important things. So work on those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know? And then obviously, in addition to that, the Bob being your pocket tracer was a really good way of thinking about it. That's something else to practice. Dynamites looked okay. Honestly, the mechanics were fine. I didn't think your mechanics were too fine. If we want to throw in one more detail, when they're not looking at me at all, I can afford to stand still for a couple of shots. Remember the life weaver kill that you missed? Um, yeah. That's a tiny little detail that you could practice as well, but yeah, stuff to practice. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some yeah. tracer. Nice clip. Nice. Yeah. You know your mechanics here aren't 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 too bad. This isn't too shabby. You're like you're you you look pretty. I mean, you could tell that you've been playing this game for a while. Like you you move okay. You know, mm-hmm. like you're, you're. And by the way, this is totally fine. If you see an angle that you can push because you have an advantage because they messed up the recall or messed up their blinks or something, totally fine. The chases. Mm-hmm. You should have yeah. an advantage here. So even yeah. if you don't get the kill, generally she has to run screaming, and that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Good. Now she's out of the off angle. Now she's sitting inside of her team. So what can you do now? Uh, well, I think what I do is like push through. High yeah, through yeah, 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 yeah. Very good, very good. Now be careful because you had to use blinks to get here. But yeah, good. Was yeah. a <laughs> oh my days. <laughs> That's so scary. <laughs> hey, we'll take it. Winston bubble. Winston jump on you. Good. Go back on that angle. Good. Good. <laughs> Mechanics. You had the right idea. If he if he gets pulsed there, I mean, I don't know that I would have pulsed him there um, because of how much HP he had. But in general, a monkey is not a bad target to pulse from. So if you'd pulsed him here, he maybe almost dies, you know? Yeah. Sorry, just hit the pulse. And that's it, it is the hardest ultimate in the game to use. It's harder than blade. It's harder than primal rage. So it makes you feel any better. Yeah. Good. The aim's good. It's good. It is good. You know, and and, and it, you won't hit every pulse bomb, but the ones that you hit will get a kill. So. Mm. Okay. Good. Go find another angle. You're probably gonna lean left, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Good. This is really good. Really good angle here. So you can even do decent damage at this range if you have to have a good angle. Good. 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 Find the target. Sim wall is obnoxious. <laughs> Good. Fine. I mean, I mean, I, I think maybe some nitpicks about you know the pole swam needed to hit. I think mechanics always could be better considering the character that you're playing. Um, but okay, I think the positions you took have been reasonably well or have been reasonable. So. The only thing I would say here yeah. would be remember that your Go team hide. is in spawn, right? Go hide or some shit. Like. Right, 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 right. Don't don't spend too much time engaging here because everybody's looking yeah. at you right now. The Sim Turrets, there's a Moira Orb, that's Tracer, even the Winston, and that's why you die, right? So this would be where, what would you do instead? Like, let's say you're trying to set up. You're waiting for your Diva. What should you do? Yeah, well, I mean... I'm really low on blinks, so if I had more blinks, I'd be able to like position and behind them, like maybe maybe go through up here from the sim. Yeah, sure. I maybe go through here. Blinks. Yeah, yeah. Probably wait for my blinks and then try to position behind them. Yeah, or be maybe. High ground and yeah, do seems reasonable to me. Yeah. 
I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Less risky than this. Yeah. Right. Cause even then, like you noticed that she actually committed on the tracer, right? Which to be fair, you hit a really nice clip, but honestly, like that's just, he, she's going to get every resource in the world, right? You just need to get around and set up. If, if you're going to do anything set up, otherwise do nothing and wait for your team. Yeah. Okay, let's, so let's see. So you're not set up for the fight. Go ahead. Tell I'm trying to ride the wave before it gets because you like, like if you're surfing, mm. you, you, you you like, I don't, I can't remember. I did it in a while ago, but it was like getting. It's like you have to basically start pedaling or whatever when the wave is coming, not before. <laughs> Right, like, right, right. Exactly. So you have to go ahead and you have to try and get set up before the fight starts, but you don't just run head in into the wave immediately, right? Because you just get yeah, smushed. Exactly. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. You go like to it. Exactly. So it's like here, it's like I'm trying to ride the wave, but the fight hasn't started. And I'm just like, this is something I do a lot. And I know that I've been, and known that I do it since I got started watching your videos. Mm -hmm. But it's just one of those things where the execution, you know, it's a difference between knowing that you're not supposed to do something and actually being able to execute. Right. And there's two reasons why that might be a problem. One, you haven't developed the habit yet. And two, you yeah. haven't put, you don't put any thought into it. You just kind of play. You're aware it's there, but you just forget it in the moment, right? Which is a focus. Yeah. One is a repetitions problem that you just need more reps. But to, to, you need quality reps of focus for it to actually be broken, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, because to get out of silver, I focused on my engagement timing a lot. And then right. when I ranked up, I was like, oh, I'm going to focus on other things. It's like, and that falls by the wayside. So. Right, right. But it's better than it used to be. It's yeah. better than it used to be. It, things will fall by the wayside as you move on to new things. So you will have to go back and work at the thing that you worked on initially. But it will yeah. still be better than it was before. Um, yeah. All right, yeah. That's, that's the catch. Yeah. No comment on that one. <laughs> yeah, <leave it. laughs> I mean, it's a good try, you know. It's a good try. I think that that's that's the most egotistical thing that you can do, and sometimes it's actually pretty good. She doesn't have recall, you know. Go for it. Ruin her day. Wow, he got melted. Holy crap! Diva plus Reaper plus Tracer. And uh, wait, I got, I got, I gotta see. We got Let's watch this HV. Yeah. Oh, that is insane. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> All right. Then set up, right? Like we, we, we rode the wave. Now let's set up, you know? Because this is the danger, right? You're like, oh, it's free. I'm just yeah. breaking turret, but, but, but nothing's free, right? Nothing's free. You have to yeah. involve some sort of sneak. Mm. Good. Or even just like force jump and then go back to LOS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Don't burn recall. Don't, don't recall unnecessarily. Exactly. Because then, cause then the problem is here is like, even, even this, it's like, it's just not that great of an angle. It's too direct, right? And then just one sim orb and there's your HP, right? So, um, and then even from a timing perspective, like again, like there's just nothing really going on. There's one, two, three, four, five people looking at you right now. Um, I mean, something is bound to happen. So I do think that engagement timing is something that you, you've worked on before. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be worth evaluating with Tracer whenever you do play the character again. Yeah. Good. Shocker. I mean, there's a fight happening, right? So you're not getting focused. You're not getting focused. You're doing a lot of damage, doing a lot of pressure. Oh, you almost had it. You almost had it. Good try. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you know what? You actually chunked the Winston too. That's like that was that was a nice pull spawn. Unironically, it was a good pull spawn. It's well timed, you know. Even if it doesn't hit, it still causes chaos. Oh dear. You're good. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now she's off the high ground. Break the turret. I mean, look at it. Look at the difference between this engage and last engage. It's literally just timing. That's all it is. The timing was just noticeably better. Wow. And so you're actually able to utilize your mechanics and, and, and some of the things that you're just better at. Let's watch one more fight. Yeah. Good. Genji pulling attention for you. Or not Genji, Reaper. 
Now just chill, now just chill. There's a mini in there, right? Behind you. Yeah, there you go. I talked to you like, you know, you can hear me. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Good. Kind of an awkward angle, but it's fine. Yeah, I mean, the, your, your team just kind of melted here. Um, 30 seconds. Can we live? Can we live? Keep it specific. One, one minor thing here is like, you know, I, I understand that like, this is like, feels like I'm still going to try and maybe clutch this. So don't clutch it from here, you know? Clutch it from here, right? Clutch it from here or even here, right? You're not likely to clutch things from here. So just maintain that angle. That bomb might actually, no, sad. Ah, oh, disaster. Yeah, and that's going to be, that's going to be it. Um, yeah. Tracer. Yeah. Um, what do you got to practice with Tracer? Yeah, just, yeah, right. I mean, time, engagement timing <laughs> again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and cover usage, getting off main. Yeah. Cover angles. <clears throat> and then Ash, I'm just typing up some notes fast here. Yeah. Finding positions with cover range and positioning on angles around your team's position. Bob on tracer angle, and then don't strafe when you don't need to. Mm. <clears throat> okay, any questions? Yeah. We talked about a lot, I know, but any questions? Yeah, yeah no, it uh, sounds good. It, it's, you know, uh, I'm not fundamentally misunderstanding the game which I think that was really what I wanted to get out of coaching at the end of the day was just to un have an understanding of the game. Um, I feel like, cause, and I feels like I've, de I definitely like know these things and it's just the execution that is really, yep. Yep. I mean, you know, it, that is really like lacking and, and that's just keep on working on the execution. Sure. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, yep. it just sounds good. Like, I mean, and then if I actually want to kind of review these things in game is not really very good. Doing a VOD reviews usually works way better. So right, I'll, right. I'll continue to VOD review myself. I don't <clears throat> do it that much, but uh, I'll continue to keep doing it. Sure. And, and it doesn't need yeah. to be like, it, it's just very brief, you know, just take a quick look and move yeah. on. I would say VOD review should be like 10%, 20%. Of your time in game, really should be playing, yeah, right. mostly playing, you know, just to practice this stuff. But you know, more I think more than anything, keep focusing, bring goals into yeah. games, have fun, enjoy what you're doing. Um, you know, we talked about a lot of things, but yeah, okay, mate. 